There was a storm brewing above Europe. The continent was set for war. A great war. Alliances had been made, militaries had been formed, and imperialism was on the horizon. All that was needed was a spark. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie Chotek by a young 19-year-old man was that spark that set the course of the death of almost 40 million people and a dark time in the history of the world. Franz Ferdinand was the heir to the throne of Austria-Hungary, and his views were different. It might be why people wanted him killed. Ferdinand was born on December 18, 1863, to Archduke Karl Ludwig and Princess Maria Annunziati in Graz, Austria. He was very far back in the line to the throne, but a series of improbable events made him next in line to Franz Joseph I. The first event coming in 1889 when Ferdinand's cousin, Crown Prince Rudolf, committed suicide during a hunting trip. That left the crown to Ferdinand's father, Archduke Ludwig. Ludwig did not want the crown. He, in fact, refused to recognize that he was next in line. It didn't matter, however, because he died of a typhoid fever. All in one year, Franz Ferdinand became the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne. That, however, is not what got him killed. Franz Ferdinand was known as a reformer, or progressive, and he vowed to make changes to Austro-Hungary once he took power. He vowed that he would better recognize all ethnic groups in Austria. With Franz Ferdinand being next in line, with plans like that, some people wanted a different future. The Black Hand was a group formed in 1901 by Serbian army members. Their goal was to unite all of the countries in the South Slavs. That would include Bulgaria, Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Macedonia, Slovenia, and Montenegro. The Black Hands didn't care under what rule, but they wanted all those separate territories together to make one country. However, the Black Hand did not agree with the viewpoints of Franz Ferdinand. This wouldn't be a problem, but one of those countries, Bosnia, had recently been annexed by Austria-Hungary. The Black Hand also had ideals of anarchism and German romanticism. The political union of the Yugoslavs was my basic idea. I am a Yugoslav nationalist, aiming for the unification of all Yugoslavs, and I do not care what form of state, but it must be free from Austria. Gavrilo Princip the young Gavrilo Princip was a killer. At only 19, he committed the crime that started the Great War. Gavrilo was born to poor parents, so they sent him to his brothers in Zagreb, Croatia. On October 6, 1908, Bosnia Herzegovina was declared part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, causing quite a stir. Princip did not agree with these proceedings, so he protested, for which he was expelled from school. The young man then moved to Belgrade, Serbia, where he joined the group Black Hand. But Princip had to do something in order to be respected by his peers in the Black Hand. One of the primary personal motives which pushed him to do something exceptionally brave in order to prove to others that he was their equal, said Vladimir Dejager, a Yugoslav nationalist at the time. Gravilo Princip, Nijelko Kabranovic, and Trivko Braves, all three professionally trained in grenade throwing, were the men sent by the Black Hand to kill Franz Ferdinand. They were met by six other professional grenadiers to carry out the task. They were ordered to kill Ferdinand by throwing a grenade under his car and then kill themselves with cyanide so nobody would know of the Black Hand's involvement. The date was June 28, 1914, and Franz Ferdinand and his wife were on their way to Sarajevo, Bosnia, to inspect the Austro-Hungarian troops stationed there. They knew that it was going to be dangerous because of the recent annexation of the area. Because of that, drivers were informed to never stop moving and get where they were going and get back safely. They arrived shortly before 10 a.m. The couple arrived in Sarajevo by train. They reached their vehicle safely, and the six-car procession headed down to Town Hall. Ferdinand and his wife were in the second car. Their car had no roof, so the crowd could get a better look at the royal. Ferdinand and his wife are attacked by a grenade. 19-year-old Nijelko Kabrinovic threw the grenade. The driver of Ferdinand's car, seeing the object, quickly accelerated out of the way. 
The grenade, on a 10 second delay, exploded under the fourth car, injuring two people. They were taken to the hospital. Nijelko Kabrinovich quickly drank the vial of cyanide and jumped into the river Mijalka. He was later captured and sent to jail. The cyanide turned out to be a clear, watery substance. Ferdinand's car gets to the town center where Ferdinand is quoted saying, I come to Sarajevo on a visit and I get bombs thrown at me? It is outrageous! He and his wife inspect the troops quickly and head on their way. The frustrated Ferdinand insists that they must visit the wounded in the hospital. Franz Ferdinand and his wife leave town hall. The drivers plan on taking another route to avoid the center of the city. Ferdinand's driver did not hear about those plans, so he took the original route. He turned onto Franz Joseph Street instead of keeping straight. Gavrilo Principe, who happened to be sitting at the cafe on Franz Joseph Street, saw his opportunity. The driver, realizing his mistake, stopped the car and started going in reverse. This broke the strict order they were given before the excursion. Meanwhile, Principe was rushing the car. He opened fire at five feet away, shooting Sophia, Ferdinand's wife, first in the abdomen, and then Ferdinand in the neck. They died before 11 a.m. Gavrilo tried to pull the gun on himself, but was caught and arrested before he could. There was a news clip made about this tragic event. Caskets carry Ferdinand and his wife to Vienna. They are the prelude to slaughter. Because of the assassination, Austro-Hungary declared war against Serbia. Then Russia, allies with Serbia, declared war against Austro-Hungary. Then Germany, allies with Austro-Hungary, declared war against Russia. Then England and France, allies with Russia, joined in on the war. The assassination of Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie Chotek was a tragedy by itself, but those two deaths set the stage for the bloodiest war in Earth's history. Hopefully, nothing like it will ever be seen again.